Well, isn't this just a familiar sight? 7 a.m. September year five. We got all our fields covered in grass and it's feeling like old times, baby. While these might be growing here, not ready to go, we got a little hay field off to the side, our disjointed field, and it is ready to harvest too. Looking golden and ready to go. Just like that, we get right into some mowing because this is the Broke to Billionaire Challenge. Welcome back. Welcome back back you look at the money you say eight thousand dollars wow that's definitely still on the broke end but guess what that changes today man we got us a little mo here today nothing too crazy nothing too intense but on the way towards the end of the year we are going to be able to harvest every single one of our grass fields of grass and that's just going to make a huge amount of silage that we get to harvest that we get to produce after harvesting the grass rather that on top of the all that sorghum we were able to get last year is just gonna be crazy it's gonna take us to the moon man while i have a lot to do today i got some chores to do you got some chores too brother and it's called hitting the subscribe button do it the other thing we got going on today is some fertilizing which i do believe we will get the massey ferguson going on and this guy is going to be forging up that other field. So I'll get him moving out as well. As per usual, we got everybody doing a little bit of everything, man. Might as well fill up on additive while we're here. I get the feeling we're going to need some more very soon. Maybe after today. Definitely during the next harvest. I don't think we will have enough uh, to cover all those fields. So we're going to have one gigantic mowing day where we get literally every single field harvested at the same time. Because all of them are currently growing grass this might actually be one of the only times this happens because i'm not sure how much i want to do an actual crop rotation like going forward i, I just don't know if that's something i want to do every single year because it kind of locks me out of a lot of crops that i've been thinking about doing also i think i'll probably just get started on this while i'm uh while i'm waiting here hopefully he doesn't catch up to me <laughs> while I'm yapping about this and that, but it locks us out of a lot of props that I would otherwise want to grow. Sorghum is actually really nice, but one thing that it is missing that I would love for it to have is if it dropped straw, which it just does not. I mean, that is a lot of grass. That's from the past few harvests there. <laughs> That's why it's so much. But sorghum not dropping straw, which makes sense, it's, it's realistic, it doesn't drop straw in real life or anything. That is the one downside to doing that as a grain instead of some of the other ones. I'm looking heavily into barley. I actually think it makes a lot of sense coming from silage because we can gather up all that straw that barley drops and put it right into our silo over there, which I like quite a lot. While I love the gains that barley can get, I actually think if we were to put pretty much all of our fields onto barley, our gains would be a lot higher because we can still gather up all that straw every single harvest and turn it into silage as well. So we can still keep the silage production going at the same time getting something that we can send further up the production chain in barley. So I think that's the direction I'm leaning towards for this following year. It might not be a permanent thing we do. I don't think it, all of my fields will permanently be barley or anything like that, but I think giving it a good year to see what kind of gains we can get out of it could just calculate it all out and kind of figure it out without, you know, doing it myself but also I don't really want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's tentatively the plan right now. I'm going to do pretty much every field. I'm wondering what ones I actually want to leave grass. Maybe some of the smaller ones. I don't know. And I might, uh, I might be purchasing a few more fields as well with the money. I think next big things I want to get in the next year using the gains from this year are a planter so we can stop leasing that out. Some more fields and one of the production chains probably the mill for turning that barley into flour and then depending on how finances are looking maybe just going right to the bakery so we can turn that flour around that we're making just turn it right into bread that's a very simple production chain it uses two different factories there to make those but it's a very simple production chain but it can make a lot of money i think just turning it into flour is like a 30 percent or so 20 to 30 percent depending on the product price increase and then 
turning it into bread is another like 40% increase. So I don't think we're gonna be able to make all our money back from buying those two production plants in one year, but we'll actually get pretty close. The mill is about $96,000, uh, which is pretty expensive, but the bakery is only 50,000, which is nice. So all together we need to make about 140,000. If you took our sorghum right now and turned it into flour, it would be, I think we have right around 100K worth of sorghum. So if we were to put that through the mill, that would be about 130,000 instead of 100,000. So we would need to do like three of those harvests to pay for the production facility before we were all in profit, which isn't too bad. Now moving past that, I'd probably want to consider some more production chains and how we get those going, as well as just expanding out our fields. And that might be a, the general strategy moving forward is just trying to ramp up productions and fields. Now some of those might be new products, but we could easily do canola and just get the get the oil facility pumping at the same time. It actually does help to have quite a few factories under your belt because then you can kind of run them all simultaneously. So I'm thinking that that all makes a lot of sense. I think what makes the most sense based on our setup right now is next year going full send into barley, using all that straw to make silage and using all the barley itself to one, feed the chickens. I'll dump more in for the chickens and also sending the rest off to be made into flour and I probably won't be selling any of it raw unless that facility is like really really aggressively slow but I guess we'll see there's also some ways to upgrade factories that is a mod that I have gotten based on uh, some very helpful comments on one of my videos it's a mod that basically just lets you pay to upgrade the facility to increase its production speed which makes a lot of sense to me you just you know use money to upgrade all the equipment in there right and it'll just produce stuff faster I think that'll be something that's really useful in the long run as we just scale this up and up and up. My tentative plan right now is production chains will be starting next year. This will be the last year we sell purely, you know, quote unquote, raw products. I I'm including silage in that, uh, even though you're, you know, technically producing it. Now, one thing to think about if we do decide to go into barley, which leaning heavily towards is might make more sense to get some more chickens as well as if we left even just like a field or two as grass getting sheep would make a lot of sense too uh long term moving into cotton would be a really good idea i think but yeah ramping up our animal operation makes a lot of sense too i, I really do want to get sheep getting cotton long term would be really awesome we're pretty far away from being able to buy one of those harvesters outside of something like a mega sale when i have a bit of money to to spend uh but i don't know how likely that actually is I guess we'll just have to see. It's just fertilizing in that one harvest and we already mowed. So go ahead and park this guy. Look at that, another day, another excellent job by the tank tractor. Oh yeah. If we do invest more uh, into chickens, like if I get more chicken coops going on, I gotta get one that's different from this man. I love this one as a starting chicken coop. I love the way it looks. It kind of fits my little rustic homestead I got going on here, but its food capacity is criminally low. It is so low, but look at all these chickies in here, man. And the lights, so good. Alrighty, so just wrapped up fertilizing that last field. As you can see here, 53, 57, 56, 50, and 30, all fully fertilized, ready to roll, all growing grass. We will have a very, very big harvest coming up soon. And I'm very excited for that. So that actually wraps up September as well. Pretty, pretty chill little month there. And I will be seeing all of you in harvesting season. It's October, not much going on here. Here. One thing I wanted to call some attention to is look how fast this produces. All of the grass from our last harvest is almost fully produced here. The one issue being the capacity here is way lower than this one. I mean, look at that. That is nearly 800k. You could always uh, just move a lot of it over here and that wouldn't be too, too difficult to do. Might need to do that <laughs> after this harvest. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> We shall see. Good morning. It is a very, very dreary November morning.
Now our sorghum here won't peak in price until January, but I did notice our chickens literally just ran out of food. So I will actually be grabbing some from our silo over here. And by our, I mean, and by our silo, of course, I mean the one they let you use for free at the grain pool over there. Probably gonna be a better way to do this in the future, just with feeding the chickens specifically. But for now, this is what we'll do. It saves us a lot of money by just letting us store the grain right there instead of, you know, building a silo over here, which would be kind of stupid. We'll just grab a little bit, nothing too crazy, just to fill it up. So today uh, in November here, this should be our month to cut everything, to cut all of our grass. I do believe it should be all ready to harvest stage two, uh, except for maybe that one small field that we harvested earlier this year. So we are gonna get some of this. Don't know if we're gonna need more than that, honestly. 2,000 liters. I don't know how many how much can these chickens uh <laughs> how much can they even use there in a real life sense it's not great to just you know have your product getting rained on like this but doesn't I don't think it actually matters in farming sim outside of your harvest whoa <laughs> that skid though now it is a harvest day because we got all this grass to mow we'll just need to wait out this rain and then get right back to it well look out little chickens I'm trying to get you some food they can only hold what 2,000 liters there like 1,500 liters is all that's cr that is such a crazy low amount for how many chickens we have in there first things first though we need this rain to go away <laughs> All right, look at that. We had to wait until the afternoon, but it's still a beautiful day. And it's time to get mowing, man. It'll be our first day of harvesting literally every single field we have. So it's a big one. Uh, lots of mowing, lots of forage wagoning, and lots of using that brand new silo that we got as well. So, I mean, let's not mess around. There is a lot to do today. And we're burning daylight, literally. We had to wait until that rain went away. So we'll get him right to it. We actually uh, have a few pallets to grab here as well. And I'm wondering how well the Massey Ferguson can move this one around. Probably not super well. I'm not expecting super good stuff here, but I mean, then again, it's nearly empty. So I um, might move a bit of the silage around today. But while that guy gets mowing there and he is already starting, I will go ahead and get some of these pallets loaded up. I realize I am forgetting the front loader here. Gotta have the front loader on the Massey Ferguson, man. You just got all right, there we go. Let's get that trailer there and get going. Oh, the other thing I did not pay attention to is I believe it's egg selling month. Yes, it is. 1405. It looks like the bakery is very high anyways, so we'll, we'll just go over and sell those right now. They must have great demand or something. I'm not sure how many egg pellets we got here. Probably not a crazy amount. Yeah, only five of them, man. Oh, better than nothing. Alrighty, we got all our eggs here. I think I'll just bring them over really quick because they're just going to the bakery. Now, hopefully they'll actually buy all these. Uh, if they don't, I can send this guy up to Johnson's Farmer's Market and handle that. Really trying not to flip this. <laughs> It's a challenge. I always whip around these turns, man. We'll sell what we can here. I kind of doubt they're going to take all of these eggs. There's no way. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, we can send this guy up, though. Oh, you know what? The fast food restaurant is actually higher, and it's just right up the street, so I think I'll go there. I'm surprised they have room for any eggs uh, after all their potato storage <laughs> that I filled up a few years ago now. I'll give them a few eggs, though. I mean, they're literally just right here, so uh, there we go. All right. Looks like about 12k of eggs. Not too shabby. All right, we have the two of them working. Hopefully they don't uh, mess each other up too much. It's probably inevitable, but uh, you know, with our silage silo situation being what it is, we will probably need to, oh man, did they run into each other already? That's incredible. That is honestly impressive. That was just so fast. <laughs> That was instant. So just delivering the last of the pallets here. And then I think I'm going to actually get the Massey Ferguson going here on moving some of that silage over to this other silo. It's a little bit of extra work going back and forth, but it's nothing too, too aggressive. I'm hoping the Massey Ferguson shouldn't have too much trouble with this trailer here. It doesn't have the horsepower to use the forage wagon, but also that just requires a lot more power since it's, you know, forging off the ground instead of just <laughs> holding something and then shooting it out the back. First things first though, let's go deliver this stuff right here. I think it'll help that guy 
out right there because I just realized he went all the way around <laughs> just to just to like cut through our field. <laughs> let's see what's happening over there. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, let's just try and help this poor guy out a little bit. What even happened there, man? I guess he probably whipped the corner really quick with a car coming. <laughs> So we're just gonna be mowing and forage wagoning, all sorts of good stuff today. Happy the Massey Ferguson can actually handle this trailer fine. It's doing a fantastic job. Uh, except for the whole delivery thing. Is it not able to drop off the silage here? So, <laughs> now we just have a trailer full of silage. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to move it over here. Uh, I guess not. Well, the more you know. Now, what can I do with this? <laughs> I, uh, I really didn't anticipate this being an issue. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I, uh, I didn't expect that. It's, uh, actually pretty close to the max right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and take this over to the biogas right now. It's nearly at the maximum price. Like, I could even sell a bunch of it today if I wanted to, but I'll just go deliver this. It'll be fine. We just have a lot going in that silo today, and it's just definitely going to get overloaded. You know, I was wondering, so it does look like the Massey Ferguson, the front wheels are coming off a little bit, because I noticed it's being a little squirrely. I think uh, if we're going to be running this trailer with the Massey Ferguson at all, we should probably use the tractor weight instead of the front loader. Yeah, it's definitely a little squirrely. <laughs> That's funny though, that's unfortunate. I really thought you could move uh, silage. I didn't think it would be an issue. But you know what, we'll just sell a little bit of this early. Why not? Like I said, it's very nearly at peak price right now, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Might as well just get a little cash injection right now of 10K. It's not just like a hundred bucks less than it typically is. <laughs> Maybe 200. Yeah, I mean, that is filling up fast. It's a half full at 200K, there's no way. So it's good to kind of stress test this system though, just so we know uh, what we're doing. And I think this definitely supports uh, not doing a crop rotation and just focusing on one crop, still having a bit of silage and filling that thing up with straw from the fields instead. Even that might be a little too much for that silo at times, eh, but I guess we'll just have to see, huh? So just wrapped up field 30. You can see we got 30, 56, 57, 50. 53 and 50 all in the harvested state. So Yahoo, we are actually done mowing grass. Ooh, what a day, lots and lots of mowing. We are still forage wagoning our other big field over there. So there are quite a few more fields to go there. Lot to do before selling season. Just a little part of me that wishes I had that baler right about now, cause I would take it out and <laughs> use it on the, the rest of these fields, man. That's all right. We'll get that foraged all up slowly but surely and get right into selling season before you know it. I had the epiphany while doing a lot of this silage that these two actually produce silage at the exact same rate. <laughs> There wasn't uh, too much of a benefit of getting this new fermenting silo, so I'm just kind of dumb. Main thing it's gonna be able to do is this one can actually uh, take in straw too, which is dropped by barley, whereas this one just takes grass, hay, and chaff. So there was still a reason for it. I think I'm going barley next year. Uh, that's mainly what I'm gonna be using this for, and there's gonna be a lot of it going in there. It's not completely useless. <laughs> It'll still make us a decent amount of money. In a way, it still doubles our production speed, so eh, there's still reasons to have it. Just it wasn't exactly the miracle cure that I thought it was. <laughs> so doing some forage wagoning here, just starting on our very last field of the day. It got pretty late in the day and we just have a ton of grass, man. I mean, look at this 607,000 liters in this one and then another 269,000 liters in this one. And that's just both in raw grass. There's also a little over a million in silage, a million liters in silage already. So just collecting the last of this, I'll be very excited to plant some barley next year on these fields and we'll be doing more collecting on that actually because they will drop straw kind of like this but it'll be a lot faster uh the harvester has a good working with 
and picking up the straw just won't take quite as long. I'm very excited for how we're going to be able to move into things, and we're definitely going to have the capital to do it after this big sale at the end of the year. This might be one of the last times we actually do grass on some of these fields, because I think I just want to make them dedicated to grains. The profit margin seems a lot better, and we just don't have to deal with things like fermenting into silage. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to be doing silage at all. It'll just be in a slightly different form, because we will be using the straw from our barley harvest to turn into silage, which is something they do in real life as well. They do ferment it into silage, so I'm excited to do that. On top of that, barley sells pretty well, and even better, I can go up the production chain to make a bread. Oh boy, so fun times. <laughs> Apparently my recording stopped. So that's, uh, that's something there. Oh boy. Fun times had by all. So to give you a little recap here, it is selling season. <laughs> We have two guys going here with our silage. We have not sold our sorghum. You can see our total tally of silage. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see that. It was right around 1.4 million liters of silage. Now, the one thing we actually did finish up was selling our tomatoes and our lettuce. I can give you a little, uh, little sold products. We got about $40,000 from doing that. That was just from our tomatoes and our lettuce. So far, we have $133,000 in harvest income, which is from our silage. And we are not even close to being done with that. Mostly been emptying out the new silo. We still got about 100,000 liters there. So a couple more runs with another 80,000 liters cooking. In our home silo, we still have another 600,000 liters. So apologies for that. I think my recording software just kind of stopped recording uh, and I did not notice. So all good though, we will get you caught up. On top of that, did a few contracts tracks on the side just while just while running this back and forth you can see we're just a little bit into selling season i still have all of that sorghum which is about 187,000 liters of sorghum in the silo over there ready to roll ready to go man i'll be selling that later today the price is still not peaked on that but yeah a little upset i've just been talking man i did not realize that it was not recording <laughs> It happens though. The one thing I'm very sad that did not get recorded was I had a real primo trailer flip in the uh, the bowling alley parking lot, just like last year, just like the last selling season. But me missing something while recording and not actually recording was bound to happen at some point, man. Hopefully I still have some of it, but I think it might have shut off before this day even started. Oh well, we still got most of it. Now one thing I did mention earlier was just some of my future plans for the farm. I'm thinking this field right here, I might actually keep it grass. If nothing else, it just provides us an easier in and out to our main little homestead there instead of that tiny little driveway. Especially for the harvester, it is just so hard to get in and out of there. Other thing I talked about was barley. I want to move into barley, but the planting season isn't till September. So we might actually be doing another year of crop rotation with sorghum. So I can plant the sorghum in April. It'll be done by August. We'll get that all planted. And then I don't need to plant again until September. That's when barley will kick in. Now the barley won't be able to be harvested until the following year. And that is when things will really start to pick up. But I'm thinking that's probably what we're going to do. And that's going to be about 90% of all of our fields are going to be doing that. I really want to maximize that. I think that's just the most profit potential. The barley itself will also drop a lot of straw that we'll still be able to make silage out of. So silage isn't being totally abandoned or anything. And I'll probably still have one you know, at least one dedicated field to grass. Things I want to spend my money on are just new fields. I really want to expand out, get some more yield, get some more of this, get some more of that. I'm thinking I want to buy maybe some smaller fields that are near our current ones and just combining those together with a plow to make it so we have, you know, one big giant field. But I'll definitely be looking for some deals, looking for things that make the most sense just to make harvesting a bit easier and increase our yield, obviously. Now, the other thing that I definitely want to get purchased is a good planter. I loved that one we used last year. The only problem was leasing it cost us probably between ten and twenty thousand dollars just for the day. We put a ton of hours on it in one day and that ends up costing quite a lot in, on top of the daily lease price. I'm thinking buying one of those actually makes a whole lot of sense. Especially if we can get one on sale. I'd love to have that Kinsey Blue planter this time without the rolling attachment because that was a little, a little too cheesy for me you know what I mean. Now 
the other thing was productions. I'm thinking grains are going to be at least for the near future what we want to go with. I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. I'm about to mention it again is I want to go with the mill and the bakery. I want to make bread, man. I want to make this bread. Now, the one downside of that process is the mill is pretty far away from our current setup, way far up here, way far up north. And we're down here. Now, that's not like a crazy drive or anything, but it, it ain't it ain't close. The good news there is while we are going to have to bring all the grains up there to be processed into flour, we're going to be able to just set it to distribute so it will ship automatically to the bakery. And the bakery is literally right there next to the Massey Ferguson. And it'll just be automatically churning out bread. From there, we'll be able to just pick up the bread and sell it wherever we're going to sell it. I actually don't even know where you sell bread, man. Where do they want bread? Oh, at our favorite bowling restaurant or grocery mart. And the grocery mart's just up the street. That's not too bad. I'm thinking that's definitely the direction we're going to head. Now, the two of those buildings being the stone mill and the bakery cost around, I, I think it was somewhere between 150 and like 180,000 altogether, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's definitely a little bit of cost of entry to get that production chain started. But at the same time, we're going to make that money back pretty quickly. I don't know if that's going to be the, oh boy, I'm taking these turns a little quick, man. I don't think that's going to be uh, the only production chain we ever do. I'd really like to get into clothing with the uh, cotton and the sheep. So that's something we'll probably end up doing eventually. I mean, you can see our money is just great. We started the day when I don't think it was recording at about like $3,000. And now we're over 200,000 and counting. We have plenty more to sell. We still have all that sorghum and we still have like, I don't even know, a little less than half of our silage left. So big, big gains on the way, man. Now, the other thing I'm definitely going to be looking at spending some of this money on is I would love to scale up animals. Now I'm going to need more space that might require a field kind of near my homestead or just like a dedicated area. That'd be a good area to grow some grass and then just start putting in some sheep, man, because sheep are so nice. They will eat the grass. So we're able to just, you know, dump grass directly from the forage wagon. But even better is you can bale some up and then those stick those bales just directly in where the sheep are eating and it'll just basically automatically refresh. That's something we're probably going to only have to fill up on once per year, but they're just going to make a ton of that wool. I'm thinking that might be a really great way to go once we have a little bit of spending money. It's also been something that's been suggested multiple times to me in uh, in the comments, but for good reason. The margins on it are really, really good and I think it's something I'll definitely be working towards. Like I said, that might be this field up here to the right, our home base. I'm thinking that one's going to stay grass and this might even become sheep area. That might be something we do with that limed field over there, that little corner. I think a lot of my early money this year is going to go towards expansion. Adding on these fields just adds so much money. We have almost everything covered that we need to to do a sorghum harvest, with the only exception being I need one of them planters, one that direct drills. I'm definitely going to be looking for the Kinsey Blue. And it ain't a Mr. Titer's video without me talking about how I'm going to spend all my money <laughs> before even finishing earning it all, man. <laughs> I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always rubbing my hands together, being greedy, thinking about how I can make even more money. But that's what the challenge is all about, man. Once the silage sells, I'll be keeping an eye on the sorghum pricing. It's going to be a really quick and painless process because we just got to rent the train. Ooh, the poor tank. I cut him off a little bit. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Imagine you're hired to just make deliveries like this just in town, right? And the guy that hired you just whips around the corner, goes boom, <laughs> does that in front of you. I didn't even mean to do that, man. <laughs> it's just driving like a complete maniac and cuts you off. Like what? How do you react to that? Money's money, I guess. But still, man, that is just so funny to think about. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
a complete maniac paying me to deliver this man. He's crazy. He, he's crazy. Hey, a dollar's a dollar, I suppose, even if it's paid to you by a complete maniac driving all over the road, delivering this here silage, right? Hey, we're making money either way, man. Each one of these runs is about $10,000, and that's pretty good to me, brother. And the one thing you gotta remember, we still got that sorghum ready to sell. And I'm guessing that's probably gonna be at least $100,000 on top of whatever we sell today for silage. Oh boy, man, I just, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a little squirrely, a little squirrely. Definitely not user error. Definitely not user error, man. We're getting there though. We are definitely getting there. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't even explain that. I was trying to hit W and I hit Q. Oh man. All right, we're just gonna, we're just gonna pick up that trailer right there. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Oh, man, I think I need to hire an AI to be making these deliveries because I obviously can't do it. <laughs> I obviously have a little bit of trouble with that. It's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, but I'm both of them, man. And case in point of why I wanna keep this grass is right here. I mean, look at this. He's coming in, I gotta go past him and I am impatient as all hell. <laughs> So I'm going over here. I'm delivering to the biogas. So I think I will get just the last of the silage offloaded here and then get back to y'all in a bit once we're selling that sorghum. Look at the two of these dudes. One going in, the other out. Oh man, it's selling season. That's what it's all about. Well... You remember how I was talking up the AI, talking about how much better at this thing might be? Yeah, well, I uh, I went to go use the bathroom while they were running, and this is what I come back to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch the footage on this one. I feel like maybe they just got straight up run into on this guy. Oh man. Oh, uh, that'll, that'll be fun to see what happened, man. Well, we got there eventually. We got there eventually. Oh, man. Maybe I should be doing this. <laughs> and not the AI, man. Well, the tank tractor seems to be doing all right. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that footage, though, man. What did the AI do in my absence? <laughs> This year was a pretty crazy one, man. We more or less doubled the amount of uh, field that we had. We bought two new fields, but we also got that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful combine right over there. To get a big old harvester like that one and two new fields, including one of them being one of the bigger ones on the entire map, is just huge. It's just awesome. Should be able to use those gains and get even more fields next year. Now that I got that harvester, I'm even more incentivized to just really expand out, get us as much sorghum planted this next year, and get the rapid expansion coming. Expanding and getting into production chains is gonna be the name of the game in year six i think whereas year five was definitely the year of the combine the year of sorghum the year of crop rotation we did a lot in year five man oh 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 <laughs> i took out that mailbox real good man i am just flying all over the road this run and then just one tiny little run after that and that is it for silage the old bread and butter. Part of me considered keeping the sorghum that we have currently in the grain silo to use with a stone mill, but I think I'd rather just cash out right now on what we have and use that money to instead buy some new fields to just increase our yield a lot more this next year. So hopefully should be the last time we sell raw oats on processed. But I guess we'll have to see. That's the plan though. We'll see if uh, <laughs> it's actually what comes to pass. I have a, a pretty bad habit of making a whole bunch of plans and then following none of them. <laughs> Just seeing something in the used vehicle stale and completely pivoting. Oh man, that mailbox still in the road, huh? Man, some people so inconsiderate. How could you leave your mailbox out in the middle of the street, man? That could hurt someone. So that that is it. That is it. That'll be the very last run of silage from the tank tractor over there. 
Now, considering we only had one field being dedicated to grass and did a crop rotation on all the other fields, that's actually fantastic to have made that much money. A lot of that money is gonna be offset as sorghum since we converted, you know, a good two harvests of grass into one harvest of sorghum, uh, thereabouts, maybe like 1.5 harvest of grass, which I think is actually a really good conversion, which is why I'm kinda wanting to move off silage at least a little bit you know if we're doing silage what I mostly want to be doing is doing it with the straw from barley I think in the long run just needing less harvest actually makes it so we're gonna be able to speed this up a bit and making things a little less hands-on for a challenge like this is gonna be really really important that's one thing that I have learned over the course of this challenge is it's very very important to make things less hands-on that could actually be much more important than the actual profit margin. I need to make a billion dollars, man. So I'm gonna have to have a lot of different things going on. And that doesn't mean they can always be super manually intensive. Now that we have all the silage out of the way, now that we have all the pallets sold, which I apologize for that not being recorded. Like I said earlier, you missed a primo trailer flip. What's very funny is the bowling alley actually bought all of our lettuce and all of our tomatoes, which makes no sense to me at all. I feel like any bowling alley food I've seen is like fresh french fries, chicken fingers, I mean, maybe a burger. That's the only thing I could really think of, of them wanting that many uh, tomatoes, that many miters, and that much lettuce, man. They must just be pounding out the burgers because 90% of their cuisine is like beer and cigarettes and maybe some fries, chicken fingers, and burgers. So they, they're probably set for the next like 10 years of burgs, man, just from all them, all the miters, all that lettuce. I mean, it was an entire year's worth of tomatoes and lettuce for me. You can see they bought $40,000 worth of lettuce and tomatoes just from the bowling alley. This is all from the bowling alley. Now, not trying to hate on bowling too much. I've actually had a good time bowling in the past. It's fun, but the more I was talking about it, you know, you got the shoes that they just sprayed that aerosol quote unquote cleanser in, which is it really getting rid of people's like foot fungus and stuff like that, man? You got the bowling balls that you stick your fingers into them and they're kind of sticky and it's like, ooh, <laughs> what was in here, man? And then you got that that smell of just kind of like stale cigarettes in the whole building, which is just feels kind of unavoidable. It feels like every bowling league that I've ever seen just has a, a lot of chain smokers. <laughs> So it makes it it makes it just have a certain schmell in that uh, in that bowling alley. You know, the more I talk about it, the more I realize I just I haven't been to a bowling alley in forever, man. But I'm uh, I'm not so sure I want to go back anytime soon talking about it like this. But then you get all those primo, you know, when you get a strike in bowling, you get all the wackiest animation from like the 2000s you've ever seen in your life. That's always a good time. You gotta love that part, man. <laughs> so maybe that's uh, maybe that's worth the cost of admission alone. So I will probably just be waiting for a good price. Speeding up time just a little bit. We're at 596 right now. The standard is for a 546. So we actually have some great demand going on, which is awesome. It might already be the highest it'll be. So I'll see if it goes down. If it does, we'll just sell right away at 595. So, okay. So exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. And we did just get a great demand. It says great demand at Goldcrest Valley. I'm wondering if we should go ahead and just sell right now but it's saying great demand makes me want to actually wait and see if it goes up a little more man i'm 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 gambling man i'm a gambling man what can i say let's see if it goes up okay y'all my gamble did not pay off we're selling at 594 <laughs> Uh, we're gonna get us a train rented. Might end up saving just like, I don't know, a couple thousand of that sorghum that we got um, just for the chickens over here. Okay, we got ourselves a nice little train here, man. Now, I can't even remember how much we got in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to leave, I don't know, a good four or five thousand in there just for the chickens. Man, are we actually gonna fill this uh fill this up? Am I gonna need another train? How does this work? I've I've never seen this before. Now can can we see back there? Oh look at that sorghum back there. That looks beautiful. Now it looks like we have another one, supposedly. Open cover. Oh, look at that. Okay, okay. So it's got a it's got another one here. Now we should be able to fill that one as well. Wow, I did not think this was gonna be a thing that we we had to deal with. Oh yeah, it's filling up there now, man. Two thousand. Okay, well, I only left two thousand in there, but whatever. This is what we're doing. <laughs> 
Look at all of that sorghum in them train cars. Oh, oh, look at all that. I love the color of it. So yeah, we're gonna sell. Oh, 108,000. Isn't that what I said earlier? I said it would be right around 100,000. We didn't even sell all of it either. A decent amount of it has gone to the chickens. Look at the money in our pockets. $430,000. All right, final tally time. So starting from the top, we got sold products, $41,761. Yes, I'm cruising controlled up i don't know what i'm doing here <laughs> we'll continue our little tally here now that we're home parked not absolutely destroying the city of elm creek with our tractor so sold products this is just all of our pallets this is tomatoes and lettuce forty one thousand seven hundred sixty one dollars oh baby that's pretty good for one little greenhouse there and then on to the big boy harvest income three hundred eighty five thousand dollars six hundred fifty seven nearly three hundred ninety thousand just under under 400k that is just crazy man that's a that is a crazy harvest income you can see our total made for the month was four hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars now i realize that loan is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> Yeah, seven hundred thousand dollars i'm just gonna keep expanding man that's the plan for year six for now that is year five i am looking forward to year six so much it's gonna be a great time but for now i'm a very tired farmer who's been driving fermented grass around in a trailer all day so i gotta go but i hope y'all enjoyed and i hope to see you in the next one I'll see ya